ladies and gentlemen of the internet and the world welcome to another episode of talking trends with your boys tony yes and tk hey you caught it what up what up <laughs> on this uh sexy friday freaky friday sexy friday mm, whatever you like cool i like it I'm not sure if our topics relate to anything sexy or freak. Well, yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe not in a good way, but uh, well, there's a couple topics that involve sex. Yes, it's true. So what more can you ask for? Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and YouTube, right? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I keep bringing it up. I won't bring it up anymore. It's okay. It's all good. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you guys for joining us. We really, really appreciate it, mm -hmm. as usual. Yep. Uh, welcome, everybody. This is awesome. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good, man. Yeah. Uh, I took the the gym off this morning to yeah. let the old uh, hot dog legs heal up. The old last quads, night, right? <laughs> and a little, a little. It's uh, a tender. that's a tough recovery. It is. Yeah. But I'm going this evening. Uh, I'm gonna do my cardio as usual, good. and I think it's gonna be arm day. Arm day today? Yeah, the old bicep tricep. Get the pump on, baby, for the weekend. You know? Get them guns ready get for the, the show, get baby. these tiny little guns. <laughs> Look at my gun. Yeah. How was your day? Uh, good. I went to the gym earlier. Nice. Uh, had a beast of a workout today. Ooh. I like it. Chest and bicep today. Nice. That's usually my MO on Fridays. Okay. I used to be, yeah, Fridays used to be my chest day as well. Yeah. I like working those two together because mm -hmm. they're so separate from each other that I find I can get, I can use like the maximum strength on each muscle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it felt good. felt good. Tomorrow morning, I might do a little, maybe a little workout. Saturday, I save Wednesdays and Saturdays just, Off for, days? just for a run. Yeah, I was going to say, if it's, it's nice it. tomorrow... Ooh, I might do a run outside. That's um, what my goal is later on this year. I want to start running outside. Yeah. I never was a big runner outside. No, no, man. You're never. a treadmill dude. Oh, yeah, I'm a treadmill guy. Oh, I don't know how you do it, man. I know. That's what a lot of people say, but I can just kind of just zone out and just go. Really? Yeah. Man, I get bored. I know. But I sometimes got, like I, I listen to some music and I'm just like, you're it kind of gets me through some certain moments where I'm like really kind of like low energy and yeah. I'm like, I need to push this last three minutes or a podcast. Or our maybe podcast. this podcast. This is true. People. Yeah. Uh, an idea for you. Hey. Uh, welcome, Robert, uh, Carrie, Lauren, Julie, Ashley, everybody tuning in. Thank you, guys. We very much appreciate it. And everybody out here in, uh, in uh, Instagram world as well. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, if it's your first time tuning in, you know how we do it. We just take subjects from around the world. Mm -hmm. Globally. We like to talk about them. And we like your input as well. Yeah. We it definitely like your input. And without further ado, we're going to talk about what we're talking about on today's show. What are we talking about? So first up, this uh, lovely lady right here. Uh, this clerk was scamming lottery tickets. Yeah. After this, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that. Enough said. Um, country grammar. Nelly, back at it again with Hot more shit. sexual allegations. Oh, boy. Up next. Yep. Everybody's favorite porn star. <laughs> He's mine. <laughs> uh, Ron Jeremy. Yeah. Banned from the porn awards. It's a travesty. It's it's a rough rough I'm year. I'm very upset about the story. <laughs> yeah. It's, I don't know if I'm going to get much sleep tonight. No. And then finally, Tony's going to talk about the seven things airlines don't want you to know. Mm, Thirteen. But oh Jesus! I'll go through them quickly. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, they don't want you to know these things, but. Every person should know. Okay. Yeah. Some quick little tippies. Uh -huh, tippies. Yeah. All right. So we're just going to hop into this and get your day started. Well, your evening started. Uh, so this lovely lady right here, she tells a lottery winner that his prize is only $5 mm -hmm. when he actually won $600. <laughs> whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, lady. So I propose this question. Do you trust your store clerk with your lottery ticket? I don't know if I do now. Do you trust your... Yeah, exactly, man. What's up with that? So maybe you've won a few hundred bucks or more. Will the employee tell you or pocket the ticket while mm. uh, telling you you're a loser, <laughs> essentially? <laughs> so yeah. this this happened this week for a Fort Myers store, according to a Florida lottery commission. Um, an employee accused of keeping a customer's $600 winning ticket and paying him only $5. Wow. Uh, Christelle 
was charged with larceny grand theft on Monday mm. uh, because she was caught scamming the wrong customer. Why did she scam the wrong customer? Because it ended up being a Florida Lottery Commission security uh, employee. Bam. So they usually do these routine checks just to make sure yeah, people yeah. are being honest yeah. because there's been a lot of stories <laughs> even locally in Nova Scotia where yeah. store oh, yeah. owners yeah. Yeah. selling lottery tickets have claimed other people's winning uh, lottery tickets. So story, I'm yeah. glad that this is a thing that is, is out there. It's kind of like secret shopper in a weird way. Yeah, it's like a quality control, secret shopper. Uh, you're be- are you obeying the rules? Right. Uh, I think it's a it's a great idea. Number one, it's been going on for a while. They do it in different industries to make sure that the quality. It's like yeah, it's like secret shopper. Did exactly. they ask you all the proper questions when you go in the store? Right. This, of course, is outright theft. So it's not actually customer service. I mean, it is, but it's not like when you go into a retail store. Did you ask me all the proper questions? This is, are you robbing me? Exactly. <laughs> pretty much. So uh, one customer says, anybody that is working in the customer service job, you would think that they're doing what is in your best interest um i'd be very upset if someone took that from me i would be too especially let's say if you're struggling to pay bills and uh, like we were just saying yesterday yeah. how the homeless woman oh my god just yeah. spent i don't know maybe your last two dollars but yep. she thankfully won yep. three hundred thousand yep. dollars but yeah i met if whatever person actually really needs is six hundred dollars to maybe cover rent or yeah. medical expenses that's a lot of money for a lot of people uh t will win the house hey guys Hey. What's up, baby? Um, yeah, that's a lot of money to a lot of people. That's what I mean. 600 bucks is no joke. Listen, uh, I will not uh, turn a blind eye. You will not sneeze at that amount no, of money. No, I won't even sneeze at $5. Uh, uh, I agree, sir. Yeah. Um, I thought there'd be something in place where uh, when they check the ticket, you actually get to see what the winning well, amount that's, is. Yeah, that's why I usually, even if I like, even if, if I get the random scratch and win and, I, and I lo- it looks like I lose, I yeah. usually check it on the bar scanner at the right, store right. just you to double check. Thing. Okay. And you would think maybe in this case, I don't know how all, I don't, I don't know if there's like a, a requirement for all stores to have this, right. but I think it, it, it should be. There should be a sign or, or like some kind of digital thing yeah. that's facing the customer and yeah. you watch the, 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 uh, the, the agent or cashier, yep. run your ticket through and it should show you yes or no if you won. So there's no hiding it. Yeah, I would think the same thing. Yeah, that would be this. That would be the logical thing to do. Yeah. Uh, Ashley, you rings in. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. I don't want to waste. I don't waste money on lottery tickets often. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But I always sign the back. Listen for that winging, uh, winning ding on the machine. Yeah. And ask to see the slip. Very smart. Lawrence says Atlantic Lotto prints a uh, player's receipt that that the clerks uh, are forced to give the customer to see the amount. Right. I like that. That makes sense. This was in the States, though, that it happened. This was in the States. Maybe they don't have the same uh, situation maybe there. I I, I did notice at a couple stores the the noise that you mentioned. Sometimes it's really high in some stores, and I've noticed in other stores where it's really low. I'm not saying it's like um, maybe it's to protect whoever won. Because it'd be like, cha ching yeah, like, like Yahoo, point. like, oh, how a, much did he win? Like, oh, wait, oh, yes, Tony, <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, I'm, this guy won a million dollars. Yeah, right, that could be the case. Uh, yeah. Carrie says it's not right what she did. Uh, she should be punished to the full extent, which I don't know what the punishment's going to be. Uh, a couple of fines, a house arrest, maybe. Uh, I never know. Um, maybe she stole the money because she was going through a tough spot herself, which is really irrelevant. Uh, still not right, though. I agree. Um, what is going to be the punishment, I wonder? The punishment is being charged with larceny, grand theft. Good. So yeah. it's a criminal. It's a criminal it's charge. It's a criminal obviously. charge, Good. and okay. apparently she she posted bail of five thousand uh, dollars. Sorry, yeah, posted five thousand dollars bond on Tuesday. Her trial date for anybody that's excited, yeah. <laughs> uh, February twenty sixth. I am. Yeah. The other thing is too. This is the only time she got caught. How many times has she done this? <laughs> How many times has she done it? So, and that's the thing. As yeah. soon as she's like, that she posted this five thousand dollars bond. Yeah. How did you post that bond, girl? Right. <laughs> Like hey. somebody else is be out, be out some winnings. That's what I'm saying, man. Oh, it's a shame. It's a shame that there's people like that in those positions that yeah. take advantage of it. Exactly. But good on the Lotto Corporation for running that um, that uh, quality check. On a completely other uh, unrelated note, I yes. drank two cups of coffee this afternoon, and yep. I am fucking lit right now. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Like, Whoa. I'm like, <laughs> Whoa, buddy. Do you have one in the morning usually? No. Oh. I'm, I'm a tea guy. I'm trying to like. Oh, you don't even drink coffee normally? Every every now and then I do. Oh, bro. You can't just suck back to <laughs> expect to be all right. I'm trying to drink this water so coffee's it passes, a drug, my passes man. through my coffee system. Coffee is a drug. Yeah. I drink too much coffee, I think. I drink like two in the morning. I used to do like one, like I have a Keurig at home. Yeah, I got the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
but then I get here. Sometimes I have another one. Sometimes I have espresso here. So it's like I'm jacked. By the time we're on show, or mm-hmm. I'm ready. Speaking of another one, Nelly can't. Here's another one. Keep his damn hands off these ladies. <laughs> Nelly, what is happening with you, my man? Uh, as you guys may have already known, of course, we covered this story before. Nelly was on and off being accused of rape of a mm-hmm. certain woman. Her name is, where is it? Um, Monique Green. Mm-hmm. Um, she he originally was charged with it, and then it went away. But then he said, I'm going to sue you. And she said, okay, well, guess what? I'm bringing the charges back. Anyway, it doesn't end there for Mr. Nelly. Uh, and his girlfriend, which I don't know what he had a girlfriend, is refuting the new sexual assault claims by two new accusers. Um, she claims that the, um, let me see, she's standing by her man, of course, so claiming these uh, are false claims. She admits Nelly had uh, effed up, which is a lack of a better term here, uh, saying they're working on their relationship, uh, but she says that these are absolute false claims. As she was at, at these times, at the venues, she was in the dressing rooms, and she was on the tour bus when these allegedly, these two new claims had happened. Um, and of course, this is still aside from the original uh, rape, uh, which he's going to be charged with, from Monique Green. Uh, and these uh, two other women, these two other claims, are actually claiming similar ordeals, meaning that these could also be follow-up rape charges if they're described the way that um, that the way they're describing it to police now. So right. um, the good thing is is that they did go to police. Good, and they did make a case for it. I mean, they didn't just say, "Oh, it didn't happen." Right. These are legitimate. I like it, and I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying they legitimately happened. I don't know, but his girlfriend is stand by, standing by her man, saying that these is not happening. Uh, she put out a quick statement saying, "I know he effed up, and we're dealing with that in our relationship to rebuild it and find trust." Having to go through all this publicity is the worst feeling ever, but uh, this should not open the door to false claims, she says. Uh, those dates uh, that these Jane Doe's are claiming, I was at the venues and the dressing rooms and on the tour bus. Uh, there are women dealing with real issues. So she's claiming they're not real. So there are people, uh, women dealing with real issues of sexual assault. And for the first time, people are listening and there is a chance for real change. Mm-hmm. But all of this work is discredited and makes things harder for the survivors when people lie. What qualifies her to call these other people liars? I don't know. Hmm. Um, maybe Nelly kind of just said, hey, girl, why don't you put a little statement out there for Here's me? Here's the thing what I find. <laughs> there's a couple things I find very interesting about this story. Yes. Usually a celebrity uh, who's, is, I guess, accomplished is Nelly. Usually like um, these, these celebrity sites are on who they're dating, who they're not dating. And I find, like, when yeah. did they start dating? When did, I, I felt it, that I, that should have been some sort of headline. First of all, what do you mean? This and this girl, you mean? Yeah, oh, his okay. girlfriend. Well, kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, Chantel Jackson is her name. Uh, it doesn't state how long they've been together or whatever the case yeah, may be. That's what I'm saying. She kind of comes out of nowhere, like you said. Yeah, um, yeah I don't know. I, it, it almost seems like it's. Oh, and we were saying, no, speaking of, came, came out like of, it came out of nowhere. And also, when the first allegations of rape happened, when we we first started covering this story, yeah. where was she then? Because she's saying she was there during all these times. True. Yep. Like, this should have been a couple weeks ago then. She should have stood up a couple weeks ago like, no, mm-hmm. Nelly didn't actually, this didn't happen on the bus. I was there at the venue. Now she's coming out all of a sudden like... Well, here's the thing. She's saying that at the time of these two new allegations that she was with him, I don't think she's saying anything about the original oh, rape okay. charge. So the rape charge still stands. I mean, right. she was not. she's not saying she was there at that time. Um, so that's going to stand as it is. Uh, but these new ones, she's claiming she was with him. Now, being with him, meaning that where are you during these things are happening, police reports were filed. There's a lot of people that you know travel with these artists. Mm-hmm. And not to mention the people that jump on and party on the bus and the whole thing. If you're standing right by your man who's the star of the whole show, I have a feeling that maybe you weren't by his side maybe the whole time. Yeah. And these girls are also claiming, again, it's a similar ordeal. So this might be an M.O. of just what he does when he goes to these cities. It's the same routine. <laughs> come on the bus. Ah, come to the back. I want to show you something right quick. And things go down. Uh, Gross. Yeah, I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, here's some uh, words of advice. Nelly invites you on a tour bus. Mm, how about no? You might want to think twice about doing that. Um, Carrie says, not a funny matter. She's actually looking forward to the concert here. I don't know. 
I don't know. And that's another yep. question. Is yep. that going to happen? Because uh, you look at concerts like uh, the yep. Chris Brown concert that was supposed to happen a couple of years ago. He yes. wasn't allowed in the country because he unfortunately beat the brakes off of Rihanna. Yes. At the time. Yes. Well, not at the time. That was no. that already happened years it was a while prior ago. to him Absolutely. even coming. Yep. And they're still kind of holding him accountable to that. Yep. So is, is Nelly going to be held up to the same sort of standard? Uh, is you the know question. He, he, it depends on, I guess, how big this story is going to get. I, I don't know. And, I mean, the thing about it is with the Rihanna case, he was charged. He was convicted. Yeah. The, uh, the whole process had been – it happened. Yeah. He had gotten his sentence or whatever he was going to serve, whatever punishment was. This is still fairly early in the stages. Mm -hmm. So it may not get to that point come showtime. However, uh, the borders can be very tricky in this country. Yeah. So anything at all – a DUI can keep you out of the country. This is true. Right? And we've known that because we see artists come and go and try to get in the country. We've seen many artists not be able to get into the country. Mm -hmm. uh, so this may be one of those situations. I don't know yet. Yeah. Uh, Kerry says, I hate to back him up uh, if he's guilty. Same time, I feel it's uh, becoming a trend itself to accuse these famous men. I mean, we've kind of been talking about that, too. We were saying that, and uh, I think our biggest gripe with the people who are coming out and accusing these people is yeah. that they somehow go to the tabloids and the web sites first but in yes. this case we we hope that they go to the police as well yes. or even first, first go to the absolutely. police so doubt. then it kind of brings some sort of validity to their story to, yeah. to some extent i'm not yeah. saying everybody who goes to the cop uh is, is correct or has been done wrong because i mean of course there's been stories of false accusations but yeah. in any case a lot of like a lot of people to say Give me money. It's kind of like the Kevin Hart thing, uh, yeah, where yeah. the girl pretty much said, "Give me ten million dollars." <laughs> she 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 went a little too high. Yeah. Maybe she should ask for two. You got to start low. She would have got the two <laughs> and would have been no problem. But yeah. anyway, um, yeah. So in this situation, yeah, please go to the the right authorities. TMZ, I don't think is the right authority. No, not the right authority. Obviously, any social media. Uh, Ashley says, personally, money or not, I wouldn't claim someone raped me if it didn't happen. Uh, not the publicity of 15 minutes of fame, of course. Yeah, what is that? It's just, I yeah. think emotionally that's draining, physically that's draining. And to, as a, as a, your, your personal being, yeah. uh, as, as your character, like, is that what you're going to do? You're going to try and bring down somebody else for yeah. a fake story? Or even if, like, if, if, even if the girlfriend, uh, yeah, uh, like, yeah. of Nelly like knows that she wasn't with him during these times like shame on her for even trying to stick up for him like that yeah and now you're you're still with him and you're you're standing up for him you don't know the whole story either you're just I mean you know what I mean right um Carrie also says some of the women accusing Franco which we talked a little bit about mm -hmm. before haven't made police reports they've mad tweets so they've gone like you said come straight on straight to social media Nothing to do with the law. If this person actually broke the law, then you probably should report it to the law first. That's what I'm saying. Like, well, if someone does you wrong, yeah. go report it to the proper authorities. Twitter is not the right authority. Don't Unless it, if it's people. like bad customer service at your local Sears. But Sears is done. <laughs> Sears, is, shit, they, they be gone. Um, so, yeah, I think we, we all kind of agree. Uh, of course, this is a serious allegations. But you know what? Once they start coming out like this, it's kind yeah. of hard to say, like, I, I was going to have to start leaning towards, yeah, he probably is acting inappropriately yeah. to every city that he, he goes to. I mean, uh, you know, uh, if the shoe fits, you know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. Be careful around Nelly's tour bus, will you? Just don't do yeah. it. You can go somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, yes. And Ashley also says, if I were to, if I, if I was, and if I was, I wouldn't choose Nelly. Well, <laughs> well listen. And he's a rich and famous individual. Um, but uh, motives are always weird, so you got to be very, very careful. But we'll, we'll see how this unfolds. We've been following it for a couple, uh, couple of months now, and let's see what happens, which is very interesting because he's supposed to be here at the end of March. You might not want to buy them tickets yet, people. Yeah. You might want to hang on to your cash. Or at least hopefully. Uh, it won't sell out. You'll be fine, I'm sure. Hopefully you get your money back. Mm, maybe not. Hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> Check the promoter. Oh, boy. Yep. Shots fired. This is another show. Sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Anyway, your, that your, is what it is. Your and, personal uh, vendettas. <laughs> Get out of here. I'm a lover of all people. There you go. Uh, speaking of lover of all people. <laughs> nice. Uh, Mr. Ron Jeremy. Ah, he is a lover of people, isn't he? I of sorts. Mm. Uh, he is currently banned from the Porn Awards in Las Vegas amid sexual assault allegations, but he claims he is a groper, not a rapist. <sighs> 
Is that better? I don't. God damn it. Ron. Can you say that? Yes. Oh, come on, Ron. Where's your lawyer? He's just telling you to shut he, up, man. She clearly, obviously, doesn't have one. So, notorious porn filmmaker Ron Jeremy, who's been accused of rape and sexual assault, has been banned from this year's Avian Adult Entertainment Expo Awards in Las Vegas. Mm, 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 mm. So, the disgraced 64 year old. 64? Yeah, he's kind of old. Whoa. It'd okay. be better if he. Oh, no, it's not time to make jokes about people say i was gonna say 69 okay um too easy god damn it uh the discreet 64 year old porn star has violated the award show's code of conduct (laughs) this is very odd (laughs) i I know at a a porn porn (laughs) award i would love to see their code of conduct to see that and who 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 enforces this code of conduct oh not making fun of the whole situation as is but it is interesting i would love to see these Rules of conduct from I, the porn. I awards. didn't know there was a code of conduct because there's so many different subcategories of porn. Anyway, oh my god! So he told Rolling Stone, "I have never and uh, never and would never rape anyone." Mm-hmm. However, he admitted to groping women. I get paid to show up at these shows, events, and photo shoots and touch the people, and they touch me. I can see that. I mean, yeah, it's his industry. I know it's in public. Ugh. If you're in front of like hundreds of people and you're they're coming up for a photo and they say, hey, grab my boob while the picture. Listen. Okay. I recently watched a video of, uh, I guess it's like a, I, get, I don't know if it was this porn, this is a war show, but there was like a porn expo and the headline yeah. caught me because there was like a handicapped dude who really wanted to meet his favorite porn star who was like there. Yeah. And then she got on top of his wheelchair and like sat on his face. I like where that went. Yes. And I mean, whatever. But again, yeah, it's kind of like it's it's a slippery is that, slope. Is that part of the code of conduct? I <laughs> come on, man. So I don't know, man. So Jeremy said the awards are a lot more uh, conservative than one would think they are. Uh, he said he follows the rules, but uh, I guess he did. I don't know. He's been in the game a long time. Yeah. Right. Like he. Well, I don't know when he started. He must have been in his twenties. He's at 64 now. He's probably been in the game 35 years or whatever. It's uh, a lot of miles on that, that man. It's a lot of miles on that man. And he's <laughs> been, um, he's been. Uh, I mean, he's, he's. I think he's. He's always been an advocate of how the the industry, that industry, is professional. Mm-hmm. Like he's always like, yes, I'm a. Pro-. And when he speaks, he's a very professionally spoken he does he, like yeah. i watched him on uh what was that tv show i feel like it was a vh1 show it was him vanilla ice they're all in a home oh yeah what was yeah, that yeah. called oh shoot what's it called somebody out there if you remember please. i remember the show i know yeah. what you're talking about and i remember vanilla ice flipped out at the end because Ron lost kind of, his mind yeah he just started destroying the stuff he started destroying the pictures of the wall everything his old pictures yeah, of the wall yeah. like when he was super vanilla ice oh what my god was that show anyway. was it the real not the real word no, no something the, else uh, Anyway, I don't remember. But yeah, I, I know what you're meaning. Like he seems very, very kind of like polite, and yeah. he could get his point across without, he, yeah, without mo- like being malicious or, right. or overbearing kind of thing. No, he's super professional. He he's he's been through the business for decades. Yeah, he knows the in and outs, uh, and he <laughs> <laughs> does he. Sorry, does for he lack ever. of a better term, uh, he knows the ups and downs, the in and outs, <laughs> um, and he. Uh, I can't even do it. Um, he's he's something. I don't know what he is. Yeah. Um, Carrie says uh, Riley Reed last night. Riley Reed last night was uh, at the big porno show, and they were all taking pics with her, uh, and she was wrapping her legs around them. Uh, she also said I was watching, and she was all over everyone. Even Post Malone was there getting groped by ladies. Oh, surreal life. That Ju- was it. Julian Carey yes. just brought up. Julian Carey, thank you. Thank you the very surreal much. Life. Yeah, okay. that's right. Good, right. good, good. Uh, yeah, that was a good show, though. I really like that show. Yeah, it was because it, it was on the cusp of like we're, Flavor Flav on there, and it, it was like on the cusp of reality TV. Yes, when it was like yes. very like going off, like it was just taking off on that roller coaster. Up. Why they don't have that show anymore? That was a good show. Yeah, um, but anyway, he's he's super professional. He's been in the game a long time. I don't know. I mean, you know, I mean, but apparently over 12 women have come forward to accuse the legendary male porn star of sexual misconduct spanning I, I, over 30 years. But again, as you're saying, like there's so much groping, I mean, in this well, industry and then at these award shows. Yeah. And I mean, I think we have to know the details that yeah. happen in a, in a private setting. 
Did it? Ha- wh- right. What are the circumstances under which it happened? Um, I don't think you can make a claim if it's in a public place or at one of these conventions, like where there's hundreds of people there, and you're saying, you know, whatever. Mm. But um, I think it's a pu- if it's a private setting, maybe something happened. I wait to hear the details on it, but yeah, I would like to see where these people are. are yeah, as the you're guy saying, has the- sex all the time, bro. Yeah. Uh, he was saying they want autographs, pictures. They flirt with me, physically grab me in different areas, usually my clothed penis. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they usually t- they ask me to touch them and they ask the, me to sign their boobs. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know, man. I don't want to pass judgment because it's not, it hasn't, the full story isn't out yet. But um, Sounds like you're a big fan. I like Ron. <laughs> He stands for what I love. No, yeah. he's uh listen. He's been around a long time. I like him, but he's okay. he's um and he does a lot of charitable stuff. He's like a super good like you know he's he gives back. He gives back right. to the community. <laughs> but how can you claim you know a groping alligator? He said he says that he groped a girl. He admits it. Yeah. I groped them. Yeah. In these settings. Well, there's I'm just as I'm kind of scrolling through this article. Uh, there's more allegations. However. Uh, former adult st- uh, film star Jennifer Steele alleges that in 1997, Jeremy sexually assaulted her twice. Uh, Steele claims that Jeremy penetrated her without consent during a photo shoot in which she was asked to simulate sex. Uh, it turned into him basically sticking it in me without me knowing it was happening. Hello. Uh, How do you not know that's I'm, happening? I'm not sure. She said, I, uh, I said, flat out no. He doesn't hear no. He just kind of keeps going and uh, pretends like you didn't say anything. Uh, during the uh, whole photo shoot, I was thinking, was I just raped? What the F just happened? Why well, am I just beeping that out? What the fuck just happened? There we go. Yeah. We're on. Uh, it's okay. We're on Facebook. It's fine. Yeah, it's cool. Listen, what's the uh, the allegation? You said 12 or 13 women? 12 women. Are they all in the industry is the question. I don't know. Again, are they all similar situations like this? Yeah. Exactly. As you were saying, we have to know, oh, define their details. Was it in a private setting? Was it in a, a movie-ish setting? I was on a scene, photo shoot, know. whatever. Uh, Ashley says, I'm an avid porn watcher. Right on. <laughs> uh, <porn. laughs> Me too. I had a oh, feeling so, to oh, acknowledge sorry. that yeah, for some reason. I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, she said porn is extremely professional and they have a strict, they do have strict rules. Oh, because, no, like, for sure. Medical checks and all that stuff. Yep. There's so many people on the set too, right? Like, I mean, these things, probably tons of dudes on the set. I don't know how they even get, anyway, listen, I have problems uh, taking a whiz next to a guy. Oh, I'm a bathroom. stall dude. I got to go to the stall. I got to go to the stall. I can't do it. I can't like, be shoulder to shoulder. No. Yeah, like something, bro. Ain't going to happen. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, what's going on over there? Nothing. Get the hell out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I, it's a weird thing. Let's see how it develops. Uh, I hope it's not true. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, if there's similar situations to what she's describing in that particular case, like why wasn't the, the the photographer? Why didn't she say something right then and there? I, you know, what I mean, jump off the set, leave this. Like why? Exa- yeah, exactly. Why are you staying there if he put his penis inside of you and you're like, hmm, don't like the feeling of and, that, and you didn't realize you're like, hmm, did that just happen? <laughs> it's like, yeah, how the hell do you not feel that? Especially from Ronnie Ron. The old, yeah. The hedgehog, as they call Gross. him. Gross. Yes. Harry back. Uh, <laughs> I'm go- <laughs> Too far. Sorry. Yeah, too far. Yeah. Too far. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we'll see what happens there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, shouts out to, uh, shouts out to porn. <laughs> On this sexy, it kind of uh, got this, sexy yeah, Friday. Well, yeah, exactly. Freaky Friday. Yeah. Uh, here's, an, oh, here's a segue. Hmm. Mile High Club. Yeah. Seven. Oh, sorry. 13 tips. Yeah. Not, are these tips or warnings? No, nah, it's 13 things the airlines do not want to tell you. Here we go. But every flyer should know. Okay. Uh, Break so, them down. Tony. Yeah, I'll do a quick thing. I don't want to take too much time on it, but it's interesting. Okay. Um, number one, here's what the safety demo doesn't say. Uh, when the cabin lights dim, uh, or sorry, we did the cabin lights at night, so your eyes are adjusted to the dark if you need to find a way out. Uh, we put the tray tables up and take off at landing so passengers next to you can escape. If they need to, that's why they do it during takeoff and landing. I always, didn't, I couldn't understand why they always did that too. Right. Uh, and also, you should open your window shade because if there's a crash, firefighters can see inside. Don't have them drawn in case you do go down. It's a long Listen, shot. if you're going down, the first thing I want to do is let me. Let me <laughs> if I have the presence of mind, there's no way my mind is going to be like, I know. oh, I got to make sure you that know, my window's up so I the fireman can see my uh, I, mangled body in this crash. <laughs> hey guys, yeah, don't worry, everything's okay. If you're on the ground and you're still alive after a crash, I'm not. That's the first thing I'm not. Listen, gonna, oh my gosh, you'd be thanking God. Yeah, uh, they're extremely uh, number two. They're stri- extremely stingy on fuel, which I don't like. It's expensive to carry, plus it's heavy, so keeping a level. 
Tony, a man of the environment. I don't, yeah, well, I don't want an environment. To, I don't want to crash. I want to okay. make sure I have enough fuel to get there and then some. For sure. Um, so they, they say it's expensive to carry. They want to save money so they don't carry as much. They keep it in the tank. where <laughs> They keep it down on the ground where it should be, of course. Right. Uh, if your flight is overbooked, mm -hmm. which sometimes does happen, don't accept the first $200 voucher they give you. Wait a minute. Uh, did you? Did you do that? I never. That's never happened to me. That option when people when I see I these stories or read these that. stories, yeah. we're like, oh, flight's been overbooked. Uh, I yeah. I was given ten thousand dollars and I was able to stay at this luxurious <laughs> hotel. And I'm like, where does this happen? Doesn't happen to me. Yeah, this is. Uh, yeah. We typically they say they t they say, and this is we because it's coming from them. We mm. typically uh, keep increasing the offer until we have enough volunteers willing to give up their seats. Yep. If we don't get enough volunteers, uh, they have to bump you voluntar involuntarily. Insist on cash compensation instead. Uh, the rules are entitled to you for you as much as thirteen hundred bucks cash, mm. depending on your ticket price. So, hold up for the cash. Don't go for the voucher. Okay. Uh, let me see. I don't want to. Nah, that's kind of a boring one. Let's get that one. Uh, <laughs> Twelve, our, 12 our, things. Our pilots can't eat, so some airlines don't allow two uh, two pilots flying together to eat from the same source within an hour, an hour from each other because if <laughs> they get, just hit the <laughs> if they get food an poisoning apple pie if, off his fucking lap if they get food poisoning or sick of course then both pilots go down this is true so they have that's kind of smart I mean that's kind of cool I didn't know that understandable uh, what about uh, how about lost luggage you ever lose your luggage people you ever lose your luggage it's happened a couple times to I me I thankfully have not don't delay reporting it even if the lines are so long uh, most of us require you to file a report Within a very short period of time, uh, if you miss your deadline, your claim can be denied. So they can just take your luggage, oh, wow. basically. <laughs> yeah. Our seats are getting tinier. Uh, I don't think they really needed us to tell us that. <laughs> I think that we kind of... Get out of here. Oh, boy. And, of course, that's uh, to fit extra uh, seat in each row. That's why they solely did that, of course. Mm -hmm. Sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. This is super important. You don't want to eat that pretzel that fell on the table tray. Most airlines don't clean the trays between flights. Uh, so you might not want to do that. If your flight is canceled, get in line at the ticket, guests, uh, ticket desk or the gate counter, but also get on your phone. You'll probably reach out to an airline agent before you get a frazzled agent behind the desk. Mm -hmm. So get on the phone. Of course, social media coming to the rescue again. See? Uh, we're not, they're not a fan of price comparison websites. Um, we pay a fee every time you book through price comparison uh, online sites like TripAdvisor, uh, Orbitz. So we're making it harder for you to use them. Remember the drink Orbitz? Uh, vaguely it was like a bottle and it had these little tiny like uh floating spheres in it oh yeah what was that like uh, uh it tasted horrible yeah it didn't last long no it didn't last long at all was it an alcohol beverage no no, no. It, you could get a convenience store it was like a carbonated uh i don't even i can't yeah. remember it just didn't taste well anyway Ugh. sorry to cut you off there uh, a couple left uh there is a right time to switch seats i do this sometimes oh boy check the seat map about four days before your flight that's when we start upgrading flyers from coach to business, and they're the best seats that open up. Uh, that is right. Oh, okay. Way to get up from your seat. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. Uh, Sorry, I'm just digging in my sockets. Again, I wore the ankle socks no, yet again for the Timberlands. It's not a good look, guys. It's like a... We are totally... I don't know who would even do this on a plane, this next one. I have no idea. <laughs> speaking of feet... Show me legs. Speaking of feet, we are totally disgusted <laughs> when <laughs> you walk around barefoot on the plane. <laughs> Who in the world? <laughs> Every, everything you can imagine has take, been spilled on the floor. Take your hippie ass. Vomit, milk, baby pee, and blood, to name a few. Oh, God. So don't take your friggin' socks off. I don't know anyone. I don't think I've ever seen anyone. You know that. what that, that might come from? Remember the movie Die Hard? First Die Hard. Very first scene. Yeah. He's on the plane. He sits next to the guy. It's like, nervous flyer? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take off your shoes. Make uh, make the scrunch like grip the carpet. Yes, and make you feel yes. comfortable. So maybe people take their socks off because too. of that. I don't know. Or people, there's just people like that. I mean, you see the, you see those signs even in grocery stores. It's like, bruh, why are you walking around the grocery store with your bare feet? Yeah, like what the hell? Especially on a plane, There's so much traffic on a friggin' airplane. Like, yeah. oh my god. Uh, and I think is this the last one? Yes, this is the last one. Uh, know what you're entitled to. So if we cancel your Everything. flight, we will offer to put you up on another one. We should also know, uh, but you should also know that even if you have a non-refundable fare, you will get your money back if you ask. Uh. So oh. stand up for your rights, people. Don't let the airlines push you around. Don't you dare. Know your rights. Keep your friggin' socks on, please, because that is what the hell. What are we going uh, on this petty date, bro? Yeah. On the what? Petty date. Petty date? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm down. Pedicures all yeah. around. Oh, bro. I'm you got to let me know. I'm, I'm always in. I'm out here aching for one. Oh, bro, I'm always in. Uh, you let me know when's good for you. Yeah, maybe this weekend. Oh, shoot. The petty boys Ooh, in the building. Baby. <laughs> I like my toes be soaking. Uh, Ashley says, couldn't imagine the seats getting smaller. I'm 4'11", and I struggle to get comfortable. This is what I'm saying. Listen, I, there's a couple Agreed. people that I, I, I know that are taller than me, bigger than me. Yep. I'm like, I'd say I'm no average size, and I'm sitting in those seats, and I'm like, holy F. Dude. What the hell is up with these seats? Why am I Dude. paying so much money to be squeezed in like this? I think it depends sometimes on the airline, but I know for the most case, man, it's so tight. I just came back, like I said, from tight? my trip. Yeah. And man, I'm telling you, I can't. Especially that middle seat, bro. <laughs> like you can't even lean one I way. No, or the other. you have you. You're using all your accessories. And they make muscles. the seats so upright that you can't even. You can't even get. A good you know what's rest. crazy? You just can't do it. Here's another thing. When I have my laptop out on flights. Yeah. Oh yeah. They have <laughs> when the person in front of me when it's on the tray. Yep. When the person's chair leans back, yep. it literally can crush my screen. Yes. And I kind of feel like I feel like letting it happen so I can like possibly get a new laptop. But at the same time, it's just designed very poorly. And like every time I do it, I'm like, this is the time that my yeah. laptop screen is going to be. Not only am I uncomfortable, as yeah. is, yeah. I tuck my frigging bag under the seat. Yeah. Uh, yeah I don't know. Airlines, it, I just wish they would just make it a little bit more. I recently did the same thing. Have my laptop on the on the uh, tray table. Yeah. And really, by the time that person leans back, my screen yeah. is like this. Yeah, exactly. So and it's it, facing my chest. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't move it, it will. It can literally crush your screen. Oh I yeah, feel. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, God forbid you have a coffee on your tray and they're moving their seat back. <laughs> Forget about it. Here's the idea. Ooh. Upgrade. Okay, there you go. Now, you don't have to go to... Uh, I thought it was going to be more elaborate and I'll tell that. you right now. No. But here's the thing. Like, if you... And I've done it many times, man. If you're flying WestJet, for example, yeah. which is known for small friggin' you know, man, seats. Man, fuck WestJet and their tiny-ass TVs, bro. Oh, my God. Sorry, not F them, but, like, the, out of all the airlines, I find, like, that airline has been, the like, lacking on upgrades. They still got those tiny TVs. Yeah, uh, you can't even switch to, like, see how far you're going no. and, like, what your duration. Air Canada's where it's at. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if you upgrade to the, um, to the not the business class, but the plus or comfort class, it's better. It's a bit more room. Mm. But if you go on Air Canada, they have, sometimes you'll fly Rouge. Now, Rouge, if you upgrade to the Rouge, which is kind of their version of business class, it's not quite first class, not double your ticket price, but if you pay, I think when I flew to Vegas once, I upgraded, I paid about 130 bucks extra, yeah. which is a bit, because if the you know if the ticket is not you know 400 bucks or something, yeah. but I'll tell you right now, man, there was about four people up in that Rouge section, it probably seated about 12, mm. <laughs> buddy, double the seat size, <laughs> I got a free iPad to watch movies on, I, well, I didn't take it home, obviously, but you get a menu, <laughs> you get like free booze, Trust me, mm. if you got to do a flight that's any more than three hours, it's worth the extra hundred and some odd dollars. I suppose, yeah. Trust me. Trust me, daddy. Trust me. Trust me, daddy. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Anyway, those are some things you should know. Stand up for your rights, peoples. Your airplane and flight rights. And tell WestJet to suck it. Oh. oh I'm flying them next week. No, oh, kidding. yeah. <laughs> God damn, <laughs> damn. it. Damn. Um, uh, yeah. I figured I, I want to talk about this really quickly. Okay. Surprise story. Ooh. Flash uh, story. Flash story. We talked about it before, and I'm going to bring it up again. Yes. Despite YouTube and Amazon's best efforts, record numbers of teens are still eating motherfucking Tide Pods. Oh, come on. <laughs> so the eating Tide Pods K, uh, meme continues to be one of the more baffling parts of 2018, which is impressive since we're just only four weeks into the year but ramifications of the meme continue to rise. Yeah. Earlier this week, the American Association of Poison Control Centers released another alert warning customers, I could say consumers, of poison uh, to not eat these goddamn pods. It's literally effing poison. Uh, the number of reported cases of teenagers in, uh, intentionally eating the laundry detergent filled gel caps this year has more than doubled. Because remember I was saying, like last week, it was like 40 yeah. Now it's 86 as of January 22nd. 
So the number continues to rise despite efforts from companies like YouTube and Amazon, which have taken steps to remove the harmful Tide Pod content from their sites. YouTube has already committed to uh, taking down any videos of people eating the Tide Pods, which may influence younger kids to do it. Right. Um, and Amazon has been removing Tide Pod reviews advocating that people eat the Tide Pods um, so yeah, they're basically saying customer safety is at the utmost, which it should be. Yeah, of and course. we suppress uh, customer reviews or content that encourages physical harm. Because oh. people are on there now saying Tide Pods taste good yeah. and tasty. The reviews are good. They're just they're, tr- good and, yeah. they're trolling, right? And anybody that's like anybody, who, I mean, who's a uh, an idiot is just like, oh, maybe I'll try one of these. So I mean, come on, don't eat the Tide Pods, ladies and gentlemen. They're poison. We bring it back to natural selection should we just let it happen i think uh i think so i think if you're dumb enough to eat a tide pod you deserve then you deserve the repercussions that comes from eating a ball of friggin' poison yes like it's a ball of poison yeah poison (laughs) you understand (laughs) you're gonna die if you eat it (laughs) uh let me eat that because it's good social media content you're a dumb fuck and you probably should die all I can say. So, uh, please stop eating <laughs> poison, people. I don't know why you'd have to actually tell the public stop eating poison, but we're in 2018. Stop eating poison. Here's another question: Have you failed as a parent if your kids are doing this? <laughs> yeah, I would say you have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. Okay. Uh, Carrie says, "Stop doing it. Just stop. If I catch my son doing this, I'm gonna lose it." Listen, I think if you're, and, and no offense to anybody, mm. if I caught my kids eating a Tide Pod. <laughs> I can't imagine. I let them finish the meal. I'm just telling you, you guys are dumb. You failed as a parent epically. <laughs> if your kids are eating, I'm sorry if I'm offending you. But listen, what? I don't know, man. I don't know. The, the problem, Here's the problem is like you see kids doing it on, on social media. Yeah. And you're like, you see the actual kid and you're like. Well, looks about right. That's what I mean. Back in the back in the day, what back happened to this? Day. What happened to this eating uh, gravel and dirt? Yeah, what now happened it, to the mud pies, baby? What, yeah, ha- what happened it, it to eating like a the, chili pepper or a yeah. freaking drink of Tabasco? Or? It's, it seems that the kids are now eating the product that gets rid of the dirt and gravel stains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've evolved. They have evolved. Ah, yeah. well, I mean, I don't. I mean, some people blame Tide because they were saying, "Well, Tide make these things look so colorful; it looks like candy." That's like blaming McDonald's for uh, people who may be overweight, which people have t- tried to do. They, they've definitely they have. tried to sue they McDonald's have. because yeah. it's like just stop going. Anyway, that's in a whole other show. I know, I know. But listen, it's all marketing. They're colorful because it's marketing. Mm. Uh, but listen, why don't you market something to your kids and be a parent and tell them not to eat friggin' poison? How about that? Can I, I'm just trying to crush my head for a second. Can you get your own head? I don't know. I'm just going to try it, though. I'm crushing my head. I'm crushing my <laughs> head. <laughs> it's hard, man. Uh, Carrie says, even eating <laughs> bugs would give them good fiber. Yeah, at least from bugs you get something. I used to eat ants as a kid. I think we all ate ants as a kid. It's pretty good. It's good. It's good for you. Yeah. I've eaten crick- crickets. <laughs> and you continue to. I do enjoy a good cricket every good. once in a while. <laughs> High in protein. Mm. Uh, actually, we had them at the party there, though. Oh, back, my remember? God. At the Baron's, uh, what's it called? The ba- What's a friggin' drink called? The Baron rum or oh whatever? Oh, my God. What the hell was it? Yeah, the Baron. Ba- I think it was the Baron. The Baron. They had a launch party for this rum, and they had one of the things you pull the card, and if you got the cricket card, you ate crickets. We ate crickets that They night. were good. They were delicious. They weren't too bad. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Don't eat Tide Pods. Please people. don't, ladies and gentlemen. Kids, adults, dogs, cats, just don't be stupid. Yeah, let's not. Try not to be stupid. Well, I think that might be it for today's show. How was last night? So you hit the, uh, were you at the... The vinyl? Vinyl last night? It was all right. It was very cold last night. So. It was chilly. Yeah, it was a little slow. What's your weekend plans? You know what? No weekend plans. Perhaps I think me and you might get this pedicure action. Well, you'll know it because it'll be all over social media. So <laughs> this is true. stay close to your Instagram. <laughs> and uh, we may have our uh, socks off on Monday's show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> get the toe cam. Ugh. I just did mine. So mine should be all right. How bad are yours? Mine are usually pretty good. Should we do it before and after with your feet? Yeah, we'll do that. I think we're going to have to do that. I'll people. get the gloss on them, too. 
Oh, you're going to get that. To- oh, shoot. <laughs> I got to be out here shining. Yeah, you got to shine them toes, baby. You got to shine <laughs> them toes. Also, feel free to share this show, guys, whenever you, whenever you yeah, tune in. Yeah, if you in. do enjoy this, please and thank you. Much love. We'd love you guys to do that. Trying um, to build the base, people. We yeah. appreciate you guys. And we have some good shows coming up in the, the future. Trust me, I yes. think the Valentine's Day show is going to be hilarious. Oh, boy. <laughs> Is it appropriate? Eh, it's it's kind very of appropriate. Yeah, I guess educational too. Very educational. Uh, but yeah, I think we're gonna try and hit up some some spots to fill up this desk. Yeah. With some things. Hopefully, my my bobblehead comes in next week at some point. Yep. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we gotta get your my guy's lonely there. He needs a friend. I know. He's got the dog, but yeah, you know, man's best friend. Yep, man's best friend. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys once again for tuning in. We really appreciate it. I think the uh, we're gonna adopt the five o'clock slot now. I think so. Uh, for everybody, so so spread the word and remember we'll be tuning in uh, tuning in at five o'clock instead of four thirty. Thank you, Facebook, Instagram, appreciate it, and we will be back on Monday. Keep an eye this weekend. You may see some shiny toes happening. <laughs> Have a safe, safe uh, weekend. See y'all Monday. Thank you. Peace out, everybody. <laughs>